All right, very windy. Yeah, it's a good test for this unprotected microphone on this camera. Cat running, blowing. Yeah, really outrageously windy today. Still have power though. All right, anyway, video coming up soon. Any moment now. I'll just use this as a background. I really have to put some kind of marker on these these cameras because uh, yeah, you're a little bit off, and you know it's no good. So uh, it's really hard to keep it pointed. So you know, you think they would be made for this? They're smaller and all that jazz. So what's the point? Uh, anyway, ooh, ooh, spooky, spooky, spooky. That's my well box blew open. Yeah. All right. Well, we have to go now. Run out of time. God, horrendous. Ugh. All right. Anyway, this magnificent tree. Spectacular. Hundreds of thousands of feet high. Anyway, still by a video. Now, commencing now. Button hit. Response video, sort of, kind of, uh, maybe, um, while I pace. Yeah, it's a rare visitor coming. It always makes me horribly nervous. No, so anyway, um, video. Uh, yeah, well, I saw a couple of Matt videos and then conference report and whatever other videos are related uh, to the, you know, this whole enlightenment thing and this, you know, shared. Um, experience of being conscious and you know some people are speaking of you know that's what we share with the animals and people should be implying that people should be um, more cognizant of that connection um, but it's just a, a subtle implication no logical mandate whatsoever and uh, it all has the flavor or um, um, smell of uh, this just just crap you know the same old um, standard we're in this together thing you know in the broadest sense like Matt would even say that even the complex molecules have an, an interior and therefore are in a struggle to retain their interiorness and uh, we have that in common with them and it's something to be not lamented uh, and I wouldn't say he'd say it's celebrated, um, but it does seem like a type of, let's glorify it, let's make it mean something more than it does. Because when you draw it on a piece of paper, you know, if you diagram this thing called life, um, yeah, it's reproducing chemistry. I mean, I keep having to reinforce that point, but it's, it's one molecule, one time, you know, four billion years ago, uh, that got itself involved with some other chemistry and uh, became what we call DNA. One molecule. One. Um, all the life here is this one molecule. I keep saying that too. And it's like people are just ignoring that uh, because that's the context of this thing we're calling existence. And in that context, um, you've got to be a little bit skeptical of this, you know, this this fantasy, uh, not only the fact that people just acquiesce to this life thing, like, uh, you know, it's always okay, it's always, it's always acceptable, um, you know, we just uh, endeavor to persevere, um, uh, but it even goes beyond that in the sense that um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's trying to make something out of I mean, the crudeness of it is right there in front of us. I mean, so, so any, any description of some more, bigger, better uh, has to be really justified. That becomes almost the UFO theory. And so you need the extraordinary evidence thing now. You know, it's an extraordinary claim to say that somehow this reproducing molecule through four billion years of evolution acquired something of merit, of real merit. And so if you're going to make that argument, it has to be made out of something more than, I'm addicted, so I say so. Um, it has to be made out of some sort of rational argument that explains how um, needing is a good thing. 
<laughs> wanting is a good thing. Um, deprivation, um, hunting satisfaction is uh, a good thing. And uh, we should preserve it and retain it and glorify it. And, you know, even that, Matt uh, talks in, about uh, the, the horror. Let's make sure this thing isn't... Stupid button is terrible. Touch buttons are useless. It should at least beep when you hit one. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's, there's got to be an argument. Got your girl. Uncomfortable. Um, uh, there's got to be some sort of argument that that um, you know explains uh, why. It was on the mat thing, right? <laughs> yeah, I got to remember where the hell I was. Uh, Matt was saying that, uh, you know, it's doing something for something. Uh, what the hell was he saying? I don't remember now. It made me nervous just not remembering. All right. We'll have to endeavor to persevere <laughs> through this little moment of um, screwed upness in the video. I could um, do something interesting, but I won't bother trying to fake it. Look, flowers. Flowers, yeah, I'll distract them while I think. Let's see. Um, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, little pink flowers. Huh? Huh? What was I talking about? Uh, let's see. Well, anyway, the point is, is this: the, all these living things are in this game to survive because of a DNA molecule. Everything's been constructed to uh, um, consume and reproduce, and little else. And the fact that we have intelligence is just because it was a good tool, like big teeth or a big giant stomping foot or some other weapon. Uh, yeah, being intelligent, being able to understand and model the environment and anticipate what's going to happen, yeah, it's a great advantage to having some of that. Um, and that's probably the, the key phrase is some of that. Um, because I don't think there's much advantage to having too much of it, as we'll probably demonstrate. Oh yeah, that was the thing, the species. Yeah, yeah Matt was bitching because, oh, we've killed more species than, you know, well, than, you know, there's five of these extermination periods, and, you know, that when we've created one of those, you know, where all these poor little species are going extinct. Yeah, there's a lot of irrelevant bullshit, you know. So, some frog in South America or something. Um, a lot of crap we don't need. Uh, smallpox, you know, making that extinct. It's probably a good move. Maybe we can make AIDS extinct. That would be really good. Not that it's a living thing, but same difference sometimes. Anyway, yeah, well, whatever. So, there's still this, this thing, this context that still exists in almost all presumptions, and all, all um, foundations from which all human conversation takes place. This, this old religious doctrine, this old glorification. And yes, throughout history there's been a few philosophers who once in a while dared to say, well, you know, the game is kind of stupid, uh, Buddha, who else? And, uh, but there's not much they could say about it, I mean, beyond that. Uh, you know, what are they going to do? How are they going to stop it? Uh, so, you know, it's kind of for naught. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a real, it's the real philosophical reality is dealing with that fact. And as long as these philosophers keep yammering this other bullshit, they're not philosophers, they're psychologists. They're just playing a psychology game. You know, let's all... Um, root for the home team. Um, it's no better than faith or any other religious dogma. Um, it's a false premise. Ah, that's the word premise. It's a false premise until proven logically otherwise. It's false. You can't just presume that this makes logical sense. That it's a good idea to create these sentient beings in need so they can chase satisfaction that they likely won't be able to attain in the majority that a minority might satisfy some of the you know some of the people some of the time but most of the people none of the time 
are rarely, are only, you know, incidentally. Uh, and that's the reality. And it's all just an addiction game, and once you're in it, you know, you can't help but much play the maze game, because you've been built to play the maze game. I mean, that's, you're constructed to run the maze. So, of course, once they put you in it, you're going to run it. Um, but the question is, is whether anything should ever be put in it. And uh, clearly, there's a lot of presumption underlying the conversation where most people think it's a given. Oh, it's just a given. It's something we all have to accept and agree upon, that the little life game is worth playing. Um, and even if it was, then the argument should be is how to play it ethically. It doesn't seem like there's too many philosophers talking about that either. <laughs> Not in any real sense. They're all afraid of that. Those, those conversations get really spooky. So then you have to start getting into this idea of, you know, maybe there is an optimum human form that uh, you know, can maximize the conscious experience to get the most out of it. Maybe we all should be a little bit deliberately uh, retarded, maybe a little bit of lead paint through our childhood just to keep us a little dim so it's easier for us to stay in the game if we want to play the game. Because being too smart will just defeat gameplay. Yeah, because you're, you're, it, you're, it's like uh, you're just not going to be entertained. Uh, life is for a kindergartner. Life is, you know, pretty colors, bouncy ball, um, you know, hopscotch, uh, fiddly sticks. I think that's what they're called. Um, you know, uh, shoots and ladders. It's a simple game. It needs to be played by a simple mind. A complex mind is going to trip over it all over the place because there is nasty out there. It's all over the place. And they're going to trip on that. Anything with any kind of enlightened mind, enlightened, um, observant, um, informed mind, uh, is going to have a hard time because there's a lot of dualities and there's a lot of um, paradox and there's a lot of no-win situations in this reality. And uh, something with an intelligence isn't going to like that. They're not going to just sit back and enjoy it. So this is too simple a game. It's too, too simple an amusement for uh, a complex mind. And that's what philosophers sort of have to deal with too. Um, I mean, as part of the argument. But again, it, everybody's just playing psychology games. Um, you know, they're just rationalizing their devotion to their home team uh, you know making some sort of irrational argument about superiority of the human experience or uh, you know it, because that's their home or uh, uh, you know even the life game oh look how much better we are than the dumb inanimate objects Ooh, look at the dopey window it doesn't doesn't uh, know how to have sex or do anything fun. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> you know. And so we play a little superiority dance, uh, you know, game. Uh, because, oh yeah, we are enlightened and we're informed and we're educated and we're not simple. Yeah, well, not being simple is not necessarily a win. Uh, that's another um, truth that needs to be dealt with. So, very windy outside. Nasty. Blustery day. Oh, look. Swimming video. Yay. Swimming. Yay. Remember that? Anyway. Um. Yeah, so, till later. I guess. Not the video, anyway. Alright, so, till next time.